For our final segment on priorities, we'll take a quick look at some other gear and software. This stuff is what a lot of people have fun obsessing over. And in the future, I'll do a lot more videos about specific types of effects and all that sort of thing, and maybe some comparisons, stuff like that. One thing that you want to be aware of is getting sidetracked with what kind of gear you're using. Because although it's fun, you just want to keep in mind, is your goal to have fun obsessing over gear, or is your goal to use the gear as tools to make music? And either one is fine, but you just want to be honest with yourself about which one you're doing. So like I said, we'll get into details in future videos, but for now, we'll just look at a few major points. The overall philosophy that I like the best is the idea that if it sounds good, it is good. But there are a few exceptions to this. Basically, our ears are not always trustworthy. So for us to be able to trust our ears, we need to train them. We need to be aware of how our brains process sound to know where our blind spots are in what we're hearing. We need to be aware of what I call crosstalk in our own brains versus what we're actually hearing. Let's look at each of those in a little more detail. For ear training, it's good to keep in mind that this is something your brain does, not something your ear does. For example, people who have absolute or perfect pitch, they don't have different ears from anybody else. Their brains are processing the sound information differently. So some of the things that you'll want to get used to with your ears is becoming familiar with different frequency ranges and amplitude changes and getting to know the voice of various instruments and how they fit with each other. You'll want to know which effects have which sounds and when you'd want to use them. And all of this will help you be aware of when there's a problem with the arrangement versus a problem with your mix. Especially if you're a musician, but also if you're an engineer, it's helpful to know music theory and to know how to use various musical and harmonic and rhythmic techniques to get certain feelings out of what you're doing. This is a lifelong process, but if you spend a little bit of time with it every day, in a relatively short time, you'll be surprised at how good you've gotten at it. The next thing to be aware of is psychoacoustics, or the way that our ears and brains work together to process sound. One thing to be aware of is how your ears adjust to things. So it's always good to go back and forth to a reference so that you have a stable point of comparison. Another thing to be extremely aware of is loudness bias. Your ears will tend to interpret anything louder as sounding better in the short term. On a forum actually recently, Someone was saying that a guitar processor they were using sounded terrible compared to a different one, but then when they adjusted the levels to match, they actually preferred the sound of the one that was quieter at first. So make sure that you're comparing things at equal loudness, or else your judgments will be thrown off. There's also something called masking, which is that if there's two sounds going on at the same time, one will tend to occlude or hide the other one from your ear. One common usage of this is when you're doing edits on a part, and you want to edit during a sustained note, here is the edit point. Here is the edit point. The last thing is what I call brain crosstalk. Now crosstalk, like you would find in a mixer or something, is when channels are interfering with each other. So I use the term brain crosstalk to refer to when our different senses interfere with each other. That's not synesthesia, that's a different thing if you know what that is. What I'm talking about is how our sense of hearing is extremely susceptible to being influenced by things we see, or stuff that we expect, or our knowledge or feeling about what brand a piece of equipment is, or how old it is, or whether a celebrity has used it, etc. The thing to keep in mind is that this happens on a completely subconscious level, and we can't compensate for it with just our brains. Everyone experiences this, and it is not a sign of gullibility, it just means that you're human. Every single person experiences this. And you can't just ignore it because it happens below your conscious awareness. If you say, oh, I'll be honest with myself, I won't fall for any placebo effect or expectation bias. No, that's rather specifically being dishonest with yourself. The only way you can be completely certain that it's just your ears that you're listening to is to have a perfectly level-matched double-blind test. The trouble is, is that it's not always practical to do that, and oftentimes when we're making a piece of music, we just have to make decisions quickly. I think that it makes the most sense to just be aware of this and don't jump to conclusions too fast. Rather than saying, this brand is terrible, I'm never using it again, just say, 
that didn't work on this project. I might come back to it later when I have time, but for now I'm going to avoid it. I think it's wisest to make preliminary judgments all the time. In other words, you're saying, I think this is probably true, and if I'm pressed for time, I'll behave as if it's true, but I'm going to stay open for signs that maybe I'm wrong or maybe there are exceptions. So thanks again for watching. Please feel free to comment or ask questions. Tell your friends, subscribe, make videos a favorite. Otherwise, thank you very much. I hope you have a good week. And we'll get started with some more nuts and bolts stuff and interesting videos about effects, synthesis, all kinds of things. Tell me what you want to see. Thanks a lot.